Hello, Commsverse. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Uh, we're going to have a fantastic discussion. Ilya and I are going to talk with you about connecting people, uh, Microsoft Teams in the hybrid workplace. And I'm Kara Wanagatima. I'm happy to be with you. I've been in Microsoft Teams engineering now since before launch. And of course, living through the experiences that we've all had over the last 17, 18 months has changed all of us. Not the least of those of us here in engineering, trying to support all of you around the world. So we have lots to share with you today, and I'm excited to do it and do it with my good friend, Ilya. Uh, Ilya, why don't you uh, say hello to everyone and introduce yourself? Thanks, Carwana, and also welcome to everyone at Commsverse. Thanks so much for putting on this event and then for giving Carwana and I the opportunity to uh, talk about what we're seeing and hearing and doing. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Ilya Buchstein. I've got the honor and privilege of leading the devices engineering area for Microsoft Teams. Uh, I've been doing that for a while now, going back to Link and Skype for Business. Uh, and so been super gratified to see all of you helping our customers use devices to make their Teams experience better. Thank you so much, Ilya. That is fantastic. So, yes, and, you know, it's always a pleasure to work with engineering leaders like Ilya that are so focused on the experience of people. And you'll hear us start talking more and more about this, and we call it uh, our humans first approach. So this is really about putting users at the center of the technology decisions, of the engineering that we do, of really everything that we do and think about uh, as we're going through this process here and really shifting the way uh, of work. Now, we always believed that we were doing that in Microsoft Teams with the types of innovations we were doing, but now it's even more important to have this focus on humans. We've all seen the reports about uh, meeting fatigue and the challenges of returning to the workplace since it's different for many of us in different regions around the world. Um, I wrote a blog recently on three steps for returning to the workplace in this humans first approach. And you can see the points here really taking that humans first approach is about creating safety and a sense of belonging. Uh, we're going to be in a hybrid work world where some people will be in the facility, other people will be still working uh, remotely, uh, even more than before. But we need to make sure that people feel like they're still on the same team and that they're safe whatever they're doing. And that safety extends beyond just the safety of their data, but also to psychological safety. This has been a very stressful time for people. And so it's really important as leaders and no matter who you are to really lean into that concept of, of uh, really in being inclusive with the folks that you work with. A way to be inclusive, of course, is to create clarity. Right, Creating clarity and making sure that you're sharing information uh, about uh, what your policies are, what your best practices are, even simple things like making sure every meeting has an agenda in it makes a huge difference to people trying to navigate uh, this new reality. And with that, we need to use the technology differently, but also with a bit more precision. Right, Many of us onboarded to Teams so quickly uh, and you've used it for meetings all this time, but there's so much more that Teams has to offer you and that can actually move forward your productivity and inclusion goals. So really thinking about new ways to use the technology now that you are dealing with this hybrid workplace. Um, you can see there on the screen, there's a link to the blog post that I wrote. Also has some great data in that blog post from our work labs uh, research group that has done a lot of research about uh, the impact of this remote work uh, on all of us. And of course, you can always join our community. Our champions community is for anyone who's learning how to navigate this reality, drive adoption of the services, uh, but also really think about how does your organization deal with change? And I feel like, you know, the idea of dealing with change is so important and foundational to the way that you think about what's coming up. We're going to talk with you about some amazing devices that are available um, to really further this idea of an inclusive meeting experience. But that is building on the inclusion you build in a culture in your own organization. And, you know, we strive to do that across Microsoft 365, of course, centered on, you know, Microsoft Teams. And so, you know, really thinking about how you're approaching this 
and hearing from people, allowing people to share with you um, their fears and their concerns, um, but also having a response to that that really gets people back focused on the task at hand. Um, we're all here to drive business outcomes at the end of the day, but we're all also people. So that's definitely something that we like to, to think about um, as we go forward. Um, Ilya, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, in terms of the way that that we've even been doing that here in Microsoft, I'm sure people are interested to know, you know, how has this impacted our meeting experience and what are we doing in response to this? Uh, well, I would say what you said about putting people in the middle in, in as the focus um, resonates with me. It, it's what it, we keep hearing whenever I talk to customers and partners, you know, We've proven, I think, over the last two years that the key to productivity is people. It's not the office. It's not, you know, necessarily the environment. It's it's people. But at the same time, we've also, I think, all lived through the challenges of keeping people connected. Uh, so one of the things I hear often is it's it was very difficult to keep people connected when we all went all virtual, and it's looking like it will be even more difficult to do that in a hybrid environment. And so we're seeing that internally, where I think we've all uh, developed some cultural norms and best practices and tips and tricks around how to be productive in a, in a world where we are all equally remote. Whether it's using, you know, some of the things we've worked on internally is making sure people use raise hands. Uh, and pause and take turns asking questions, and we make sure to include everyone who's raised their hands. Or using chat, that's become sort of a meeting within a meeting uh, so that people are free to comment and ask questions without necessarily speaking up if they're uncomfortable or uh, interrupting the flow of the presenter. Or making someone feel more comfortable presenting remotely with features like PowerPoint Cameo, which we've been using you know, early on internally, where you can overlay someone's video on top of the content so they're not two very distinct modalities. So I think we've grown these norms, uh, but we now have to rethink those when we're no longer all equally remote. Uh, and we've already started to see that internally. When some people are together in one space, it's really easy to very quickly forget uh, some of the things yes. we've built up on, yes. uh, you know, and, and forget to monitor or even raise hands virtually and just sort of face the person who's across from you. So we've really tried to focus on what can we do in technology, but also in just best practices uh, to help address the situation when some folks are on their own, some folks are physically together. What can we do through our technology, through the power of AI, and also through just best practices to kind of level the playing field? I think you really hit on something there. You know, human behavior is what it is. And the default behavior, if we're there in the same room to simply look at each other and not look at devices is very, you know, it's very hardwired into us. I think we're all going to have to lean into some new behaviors. And this was actually true before the pandemic also. Uh, I try to build a best practice of making sure before I close every meeting to address the people on the phone, to have moments in those meetings where you pause and ask for feedback from the people participating remotely. Um, you know, that was always something I tried to do even before the pandemic. And now I feel like it's a critical best practice that has nothing to do with the technology. Right. That's definitely about the human interaction component of this. So, you know, for me um, as a change manager, it's important for me to make sure people understand that the technology won't solve the problem of inclusion if your organization isn't doing it. It will actually highlight that you're not being inclusive. So it's important to build those things right now today. In your next team's meeting, just make sure to check for raised hands. Make sure to ask if people want to give feedback. Um, give an opportunity for people who don't like to speak to give feedback after the meeting. Like really think about what does it mean for someone to feel included in the project that you're working on. So, you know, you and I know share that. And you also have some great content that you want to go over with people. So I feel like now is a great time for you to share with people some of your thinking on these hybrid meeting experiences. Will you do that? 
Sure. Thank you, Karana. And one of the things I wanted to mention, building on what you said, is I'm going to talk about technology. That is that is what we build. But I was very, very happy to see that uh, in our announcements last week of lots of new capabilities, we also stressed announcing some, some guidance, some best practices for hybrid meetings. And some of those had sort of nothing to do with technology. But um, for example, one of them was some meetings shouldn't be hybrid. If the people that are physically together are in a place where you can't be seen, you can't, or you by definition need to be all on whiteboarding, it may be more inclusive to not do that as a hybrid meeting, to do it as 100% virtual so everyone is equal and remains equal. So we, we published some guidance based on our own best practices around what you can do in low tech spaces, what you can do in spaces that have technology like room systems. Um, but again, I think the non-technology part of that is just as important as the tech. That said, I love talking about tech. I love talking about devices. So uh, I would love to chat about what we're what we're doing to help make this hybrid meetings, hybrid workplace reality uh, better, more productive, more inclusive. And I thought I would start with people when they are on their own, when they're not physically together. This is something that um, we've been working hard with our partners to improve based on what we're hearing as kind of the top things that matter to you and I, which is making sure that I can be seen, making sure that I can be heard, and giving me the confidence that I will be my best self. Um, what is your favorite device? I mean, you have access to all the cool new toys. So what is the thing, um, although I probably shouldn't say that since I have a Surface <laughs> behind me, I have some things to use, some cool new toys too. And what is your favorite device, though, for, you know, in your personal workflow? Boy, you know, Caruana, that, that's like asking me to choose my, my favorite kid, you know. Yeah, uh, right. Like you said, I'm so fortunate that I get to try all these devices. So right now I'm recording using a Poly P15. Um, I think that that device has a great camera, great audio uh, capabilities. I love the acoustic noise fencing. Um, but when I've got my wife working next to me, like I had a little bit earlier, I use a headset. And so I have multiple headsets with the Teams button. I've got my Jabra uh, standing by here. This headset with the Teams button, Surface Headset 2. Um, I've got some devices I can't talk about that <laughs> haven't been certified yet, some new earbuds. Uh, I've got my Teams display right here that tells me what's happening. So um, oh, I'm very, very fortunate, like I said. And so for my personal space, really hard to say if I have a favorite. I, I love having the the wealth uh, the, uh, of choice around me. Yes, it really does make a difference. And I do find, and I think that's one thing I want folks to understand is that you need different devices for different scenarios. You know, uh, I happen to be in my home office right now. I can be on my speaker phone. Uh, it works fine for this. Um, oftentimes I have a lav mic on when I'm doing these sorts of things. Um, but in other situations, I need that headset. Um, so it's just important not to think that you have a one size fits all situation. Um, and, you know, I'm just now I find myself in the situation all my career. I've been asking people to stop emailing around that spreadsheet. And now I'm begging them to stop use the default earbuds they get with their mobile device. Please, I beg of you, please stop using that, especially if you're on national television. Just stop it. Get a real headset. You know, thank you. Um, it's Thank so you. funny. I, I, my husband watches me cringe every time I see someone on national television with their earbuds in. It drives me a little crazy. I know. I, I used to say friends don't let friends use non-certified devices. And it, <laughs> it kind of goes from there. Definitely. I think it does. I, I had the same cringing. Exactly. Exactly. Well, now I think you have some content on when people are working together. So let's, uh, let's talk about that. Yeah. Great transition. So, uh, Conference rooms or, uh, you know, office meeting spaces are uh, a challenge. They are a real challenge for our, our customers because there was some, some recent data published from Wayne House. Uh, on average, 
only 10% of conference rooms have any kind of video equipment. The rest may have a display and or a phone or may just have no technology whatsoever. And when you think about that, it is stunning to say we, we've all gotten so used to this experience I described where we see each other well and hear each other well. And then when we're asked to go back in the office, 90% of rooms, not at Microsoft, but in many customers, we're going to walk in and there's nothing. Uh, and it gets worse. Uh, there's only 5% of small rooms that uh, actually have any technology uh, in them for meetings. And yet, when we look at average number of attendees in meetings, it's actually around five people. And if you think about half of those will be remote, well, the rooms that are going to be most critical to have well-equipped are going to be focus rooms and small rooms, and they're the least well-equipped today. So it's a real challenge. And we hear our customers loud and clearly say, this is a, a huge area of focus. That same Wayne House study said that the vast majority of IT respondents, I think it was around 90%, said that they were making purchase decisions in the next three to six months around equipping their rooms. Um, we're seeing uh, the, the current super unfortunate and you know horrible Delta wave in some ways actually kind of give a sigh of relief to customers because the delays in, in implementing back to office give them some more breathing time to get their office environments more equipped. So with that comes the question of, well, what should that look like by size of room, uh, by type of meeting? And uh, we've published some guidance around that as well. Our goal is to meet customers where they are. So we are looking to try to make every meeting in every space better, even if the room is not equipped. To that end, we've published some guidance that says in non-equipped rooms, everyone should bring in their laptops and at least one certified shared audio device, like a puck. Do not try to make laptop audio work with very few exceptions. It will not be good enough to cover more than just one person sitting in front of the laptop. But we're gonna also try to make that scenario fundamentally better in Teams using proximity detection. So when two laptops join the same meeting, we will prompt to make sure only one has audio turned on so you don't get that howling. We will also work to update our gallery. We announced what's called dynamic view. So we'll be working to update that so that people that are sitting physically together don't see each other also in their own in-room gallery, whether it's on laptops or in the front of room with Teams rooms. Those are just a few of the things we'll be doing to make the experience better. The best experience will come when those rooms are equipped with Teams rooms. Whether it's Teams rooms on Android, Teams rooms on Windows, or our newly uh, launching this month Teams rooms on Surface Hub, which I have right behind me. So we've uh, published a lot of information about how we'll be enhancing Teams rooms. And a lot of that is going to be based on AI. So we also announced last week a set of capabilities across our partners that we refer to as intelligent cameras. This is a combination of work in new APIs that we are doing and in AI code that will actually run on these cameras. And it's focused around three key scenarios. One is enabling these cameras to provide separate feeds for people that the camera recognizes in a room. And we think this is crucial. Having that one view of the room, that used to be good enough pre-pandemic. What we're hearing is it's just not good enough anymore. Now that we're all used to seeing our faces in our own square of video. And providing that capability for people that happen to be together physically is going to be key. At the same time, the other feature is really high quality active speaker identification. So being able to tell who in a shared physical space is speaking is going to be more important than ever. And last but not least is face ID. 
So not only should everybody get their own square of video, even when they're in a room, but we should be able to put the names of the people under each of those videos and in the roster. And so we're building on the work that we did with our intelligent speakers, where we are going to enable people to enroll, if they choose their audio with Microsoft 365, they'll also be able to enroll their video. And if they do so, we will use a combination of audio and video to identify them, put their name under their square, list them in a roster, be able to help them check in very quickly when they get to a physical space. So we have a variety of intelligent camera capabilities coming across cameras for uh, Teams Room on Windows, including from Jabra. If you were to ask me my, my favorite current room device, I'm super excited about the Jabra Panacast 50. I think it's the perfect device for small rooms and focus rooms with all those AI capabilities. Poly with the E70, great device for medium and large rooms. It's going to be the device that's going to replace the Poly Eagle Eye Director 2 in our boardroom, for example. So you know that I'll be very, very curious and focused on making sure that's high quality. Uh, and other devices from Neat and Logi, you know, will all have these, these capabilities. Ooh, I feel like I've been talking for a, a bit there, Caruana. There did, you did were. Did that all make sense? Yes, it totally did make sense. And, you know, I think what's really, you know, the takeaway there is, for me anyway, you know, because um, I'm always downstream of some of these things, and I'm always thinking about adoption and quality and experience. And what's amazing to me is the type of innovations that have come in a way the pandemic has pushed us, I believe, further and faster into some of these things that were already on the horizon. Don't you feel like we've, I mean, I know you and I talk a lot about the accelerated pace of change, but I feel like that's very relevant when it comes to um, device innovation as well. Yeah, we, uh, it's amazing when I think back on, on how much stuff we've shipped. We are very conscious of uh, that surge that I mentioned from our customers around hybrid meetings. So we're we're very, very focused on surging ourselves to deliver enhancements in software. So separate, I know I talked a lot about intelligent cameras, but our goal is to just make Teams and Teams rooms better with just software upgrades by end of calendar year uh, for, for hybrid meetings. Um, so some examples of that, uh, coming very soon to Teams rooms, in dual screen rooms, you'll be able to see video across both screens. You'll be able to pin and spotlight participants so that you can focus on remote participants. Um, you already can raise hands, but we're gonna enhance how you see who remotely has raised hands, including in our front row layout, having a pane that shows the queue of raise hands. Um, and those are, you know, those are just a few of the things that we're doing. And then of course, front row. I, I'm incredibly excited about our front row experience. Uh, some of the folks on the team like Greg Barabolt and Shiraz Kalpa and our design team who uh, focused on this, I think did incredible work. But front row is a layout that's gonna come to all teams rooms. It works best for rooms that have been reconfigured with furniture like what I'm showing behind me that faces remote participants. But for any room, having participants at eye level, uh, hearing people with positional audio, showing fluid components like not just chat on one side, but agenda, notes, tasks, you know, those are all things that we think are going to be really, really important for hybrid meetings. And uh, we're very focused on getting those delivered by end of calendar year. Well, you know, I firmly believe that running a great meeting is one of those core skills um, for anyone uh, out there in the world. I found myself um, being able to take advantage of a variety of opportunities because I run really good meetings with the tasks, with those sorts of integrations, with being able to bring people along and keep the information flowing. And anything you can do to help make that easier um, is a great thing because it affects everyone. Great meetings affect everyone, no matter what industry we happen to be in. But I want to give a shout out also to the IT pros. 
out there. Um, you know, yeah. managing these rooms is a very important component of what's going on. So could you talk a little bit about what we're doing around um, team room management? Yeah, uh, a huge plus one. The IT task, I think, has never been, frankly, more difficult because as, as an IT person, you now have to equip people at home and your office space. Um, I think one of the customers said this to me, the equipment that you get at home is going to become kind of like the gourmet cafeteria of benefits <laughs> moving forward. You know, people are going to look to see what is the company doing to help me no matter where I am. And IT has to deploy, manage, update those devices. Um, so there's a few things we're doing. One is we are committed to making the Teams Admin Center the one-stop shop for self-management. Uh, so if Teams Admin Center is the portal that you live in, we will have, by end of this calendar year, a complete device management solution. Everything from health, quality, room utilization, uh, peripheral management and updating, that is all in our roadmap. Now, we're also very committed to having one shared infrastructure for that. So if a given company also has folks who live in Endpoint Manager, formerly known as Intune, the same infrastructure will be shared and you can do much of the same, if not all of the same things in uh, Endpoint Manager. And last but certainly not, not least, there are companies who've said, uh, we need help in managing these rooms. We can't or don't want to scale our own resources to do that as many companies are now looking to have 100% of their rooms be video enabled. And so for that, we have Teams Rooms Managed Services where Microsoft expertise is used for 24 seven monitoring, uh, and even automated remediation of issues. Um, so if there's one message I do wanna leave this conference with is that IT is top of mind for us, not just these end user capabilities. That's really important because we know that it's not, you know, as a former IT professional, I still consider myself one, we're the ones who make things work, right? And we're also the ones who bear the brunt of the difficulties when things don't. And so. Thank you on behalf of those IT pros for doing what you can to streamline that experience because, of course, that's also something's worth pointing out that's very feedback driven. We've had tremendous customer feedback on this. We've used that in our design and iteration, you know, our design sprints. We continue to get feedback and we want your feedback on these things. So, you know, keep it coming, right? That you're helping us to meet the demands of this current time. Uh, and, and we really want to make sure that you feel included in the process. Um, you know, this is something that, you know, we're all in this together and we're going to get to this next phase of really efficient and inclusive hybrid work together. So, you know, thank you to you and the team for always listening to the customer voice and listening to the feedback. We appreciate that. And I know our customers, you know, do too. Doesn't mean we're perfect. We understand that. We have a long way to go. None of us are claiming that. Um, but, you know, it's a process and I just feel happy about the fact that the customer voice has been so obvious in the innovations you've done, especially in this IT pro area. I think that's really important. Well, Karana, it's it's a mutual thank you because your team is so important to us to getting that customer voice and the partner and the community voice. And, and by the way, as a very quick pitch, there's a lot more that I that I haven't covered in our roadmap. Um, whiteboard improvements. So uh, the ability to start a digital whiteboard session from Teams Rooms, we, we've heard that loud and clear, that's coming. Um, there's a long roadmap around uh, expanding direct guest join to other online meeting services in addition to Zoom and, and uh, WebEx, that's coming. Um, join by meeting ID and passcode, that's coming. So lots and lots of new capabilities coming based on the feedback we've we've gotten from all of you. And that's across Teams Rooms and Surface Hub. And I just wanna emphasize that because now moving forward, it's basically the same experience. It's Teams Rooms, Teams Rooms on Surface Hub. Yeah, and I think that that's really important to note. It very much streamlines the management experience. And, and frankly, it streamlines our ability to release improvements um, and, and maintain, you know, that, that quality bar that we're going to. So that's really important. Um, so thank you, Ilya, for all that. I really appreciate it. 
Now I want to turn back for a moment um, back to the issue of enabling all of this amazing work that Ilya and his team are delivering. Um, again, this comes down to people. And um, you may not have heard of it, but we have something called the Champions Management Platform. And this is a tool that you can install in your tenant that will help create a center of gravity for the people in your organization who are going to help everyone else know how to use this and really embrace best practices. Never has it been more important for you to have a team of champions. And you could be three people, you could be 300, but the Champions Management Platform will allow you to, like I said, create that center of gravity inside of teams uh, for the work that you're doing. It's totally free. It's free and available to you. You need a little help from your IT pro to get it installed, but once it's installed, you as a champion can manage it. And it's a fantastic way to integrate not only these best practices and helping people to uh, understand how to use the technology, but also um, really drive recognition for those folks who have leaned in. Champions have been fantastic during this time, helping people to get the most out of all the technologies that are available. And so being able to use this tool to provide them recognition, give them a center of gravity for learning, and communicate with them about changes to the service is important. We love to pair this together with Teams Advisor and the Planner Sync for the Microsoft 365 Message Center posts that bring that out into one place so you've really got that information that people need. So if you're not familiar with the Champions Management Platform, check it out. We just released version 1.3. We're continuing to do more things there. Um, and we're really excited about what that actually means in terms of empowering the people who are doing so much of this work. Um, and half of you may come from an organizational change background and the other half of champions are like me. We're IT pros um, and developers who are really looking to expand and make sure we have healthy usage of all the solutions and the capabilities that exist. So, you know, make sure that you take advantage of that. And you can always find out more uh, in our Champions community. We have monthly calls that are free for everyone. And we talk about new features in Teams, new features across Microsoft 365 and the Power Platform. Um, we talk about uh, best practices and case studies. And you hear from other customers about what they're really doing out in our forum. And for me, I find that hearing from each other is really the best way. When I was a customer of Microsoft and driving SharePoint usage back in the day, that was what really helped me the most was hearing from other people who had the job I had and what they were doing. So make sure you take a look at that. Uh, and, you know, we want to leave you with some clear next steps also. And these are the next steps that we think that you should take um, to, you know, continue to move forward in this area. So enable a champions network. Make sure that you have the right policies that you can clearly communicate through all the various communication methods that you have, whether it's a town hall in Teams, a Yammer feed, uh, announcement post in Teams or email. Make sure that you're getting people the information that they need to feel included and to really understand what's next for them because there's still a lot of uncertainty in the world. Make sure you're also gathering feedback. You can use Poly in Teams or Forms to conduct feedback and gather data about what people really need. If you talk to your users, they will tell you what they need, but you have to ask, right? Make sure you're supporting those new policies with training. Um, for those of you, I'm sure you will have heard about um, Viva, our employee experience platform. Viva Learning provides you that ability to make sure that you will be able to pull in training on key topics from our platforms and others. And of course, Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways is there for you to create your own customized uh, learning paths also. And that has been really helpful to organizations who've in installed it. Make sure that you're evaluating those device needs. Um, you know, there's a, a methodology to that. Um, you can reach out in our community and we can help you with that. But also there are many great Microsoft partners, many of whom who are here, who can also help you with that. Um, because it is a little bit of a daunting task to understand what do you need to do and how do you, uh, you know, think about those capital investments in your organization. And lastly, join us in the community. We are here to help you. We want to make sure that you don't feel like you're alone during this time because you're not. 
Uh, we are absolutely with you in this, and there are millions of people around the world who are on this journey. So even if you're the only person in your organization who's thinking about these things, you aren't thinking about them alone. So always reach out to us, uh, either in the Teams technical community or in the Driving Adoption community, both part of the broader Microsoft tech community, and we're absolutely there to, to help you navigate this time. No matter what's happened before or what happens next, Microsoft is here to empower you to make sure you are landing your business objectives. Um, you know, I know we talk about our features and, and, and using our software and what have you, but I've never worked in a place where I felt more passion for the actual user experience or empowering your business outcomes. And that's one of the reasons I love working here. So I hope you get that feeling from both Ilya and I. That is certainly what drives both of us. And I'm really happy that we were had a time chance to spend some time with you today. Ilya, is there anything you'd like to add to that as we as we sign off? Yeah, I just want to add again my thanks. Uh, I have such admiration for and gratitude to this community um, at Commsverse. Uh, I can't think of a better group of people to to want to go through this incredible experiment and transformation that where we our customers everyone's in together so thank you thank you for your bet on microsoft teams and teams devices and teams rooms uh thank you for everything you do to help our customers succeed and hopefully all of you know exactly where to find me and my team on linkedin on twitter if you ever need any help or have feedback please, please feel free to reach out. Absolutely. We know where to find you. And if they can't <laughs> find you, they'll find me and I'll find you. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Well, thank you, Ilya. I know how busy you are. I really appreciate your time today. I know the community appreciates it. I appreciate the community always asking us to come back and share this information. Um, you know, we think it's a privilege to be able to, to share this with you and uh, looking forward to more. All right. Thanks so much. We'll see you all later. Back to everyone at Cosverse.